now that we've created um, yeah, a theme, let's say the old ways, that uh, how you could do it um, until SXA 1.9, uh, let's have actually uh, a look into how you would do it with a SXA CLI that got introduced uh, in the version 9.3. So um, the aim of the SXA CLI is, uh, well, to create a new theme. Um, you are able to build and compile and minify the theme assets, and you are able to upload the theme assets to Sidecore. So all all at once, but you're also able to automatically synchronize all the front end related assets uh, with Sidecore uh, while you're working on the assets. And once you save it, uh, yeah, your folders are, are being watched for changes and then automatically start synchronizing that. So for that purpose, um, we have basically a few commands offered by the um, by the SXA CLI. So uh, the first one, SXA new is the command in order to create a new theme. So you just provide a new theme and run through a kind of questionnaire, uh, which you will see in our next demo, um, so that everything is configured right for you and um, the theme is being created on your local file system, but also the folder structure is created uh, along with the theme item in Sidecore. Um, then there's a command called SXA config, which allows you to reconfigure an existing theme that you have created uh, with the CLI. And you might know this. Um, so if you have used the SXA CLI in version 9.3, um, then this has been the command SXA init in version 9.3, but it has been renamed from what I think is uh, even a better naming. So it has been renamed in version 10. Um, so the old SXA init is now the SXA config, uh, and the old uh, and the SXA init command has now a different purpose, which allows you to to re-download a couple of files that you require in order to upgrade your SXA theme. So. Uh, you basically, so if you have created a theme with the CLI in 9.3 and you now want to use the CLI 10, you can run the SXA init command. So it downloads you the files that you need in order to, uh, yeah, to run it also with the CLI in the version 10. So then introduced with the SXA and the CLI 10 is the watch command. So you can either watch all, uh, so all the, the folders of your, of your theme, or you can also watch single folders by just provide, providing a task name like uh, JS or CSS or SAS or something like that. Um, so then this single folder is watched and synchronized um, to Sidecore. So this replaces um, the command that you know from the, or that you might know from the SXA CLI 9.3, uh, which was just the gulp command where you were also able to, to gulp, uh, to, to synchronize everything using that command or run a gulp uh, JS, for example, to just synchronize and watch the um, JavaScript folders uh, as, as an example. Um, what you need to do in order to create a new theme is uh, to register your URL. Um, so therefore you have the command SXA register and then you just provide your URL. So once you execute the SXA new command, you're going to ask, uh, you're going to be asked if the registered URL is the right one. Um, to be to be used for the configuration and for the connection to the Sidecore instance, and uh, well, if you have registered it first, um, then you you just have to confirm that this is the right URL twice in this SXA new questionnaire, um, and if uh, if you haven't done so, then you have to provide it and copy it latest in the SXA new command. So. Um, the SXA get URL is just the um, equivalent, I would say, or the completion of the SXA register. So if you don't know what URL is currently registered, you can just call the SXA get URL command and you will get it prompted in your command line interface. And very useful commands from my perspective that uh, I think also the community has been waited uh, since the introduction of uh, the CLI is to have a dedicated uh, SXA build command, a dedicated SXA upload, and also a, a dedicated SXA rebuild command. So those commands allow you to uh, compile and minify your, um, your assets. So if you run the SXA build command for all your folders, then a minified JavaScript and a minified uh, and compiled CSS file is being created. And the SXA upload command allows you to connect to your Sidecore instance and upload all the uh, 
all the assets that you have configured to be uploaded. So either all the source files along with your minified files or just the minified files. So the SXA rebuild is just a combination of both that on the one hand builds everything and on the other hand then also uploads it. So it also requires a connection uh, to your site, for instance. And I do appreciate those additions because before the latest version of the SXA CLI, you did have to do a few different steps to accomplish all those goals that you just described. For instance, if you wanted to pull the latest front end code from your Git repo and then make sure that you synced all the other front end developers recent work into your local instance of Sitecore, you'd have to go through at least two or three different steps. Now with this SXA rebuild command, it's basically just a single command. You just run it after you pull the code and that will rebuild and sync everything into your local instance if you've previously set it up to register your correct local URL. Yeah, yeah, it really makes life much easier. And I think it's a good completion of, or a good enhancement at least of the CLI, whatever commands might come in future. Mm -hmm. So um, before we go into the demo, let's have a quick look on what we need to do. So, um, on the one hand, what we will show in the demo is to set up the CLI. There is even a good uh, tutorial already by Mark van Alst, uh that was introduced directly with the release of 9.3. Uh, we will just uh, redo more or less the steps in here. Um, and um, then we will definitely create a new theme for our uh, company site and then synchronize that theme also into um, into Sidecore so that we can actually use that uh, that theme and start styling um, our components so they actually look like they're supposed to look. So let's uh, go into the demo. So now we want to create a theme using the SXA CLI and uh, in order to do so, so we have a few prerequisites. So on the one hand, we need to have Node.js installed and also uh, NPM installed. And the good news is introducing with the CLI uh, 10, it supports also Node.js 12. And uh, so that's, I think, a good improvement. Uh, on the other hand, it also uh, is using now Gulp version 4. So that uh, that's lets us get rid of a few vulnerabilities reported with the older Gulp versions. and uh, we also use jQuery version 3.4.1. So um, I think this, these are at least few few improvements that the community has uh, waited for. And um, yeah, let's get directly started. So I'm opening up here uh, a new terminal in um, Visual Studio and I'm zooming in a bit. So here we are. And first of all, I want to see if I have NPM installed. So in my case, uh, I have it already in some version, might be an older one, and uh, I also check if I have Node installed. So also this is installed even though it's an older version, but I do not have to reinstall it. If you don't have it, uh, or yeah, just check it with the npm minus v to see if you have it installed. Same for Node, uh, Node minus v to see if you have Node installed. If not, uh, go and get it from the internet, install it to your instance. Um, and then uh, you can continue from here. Just a quick note for cases where you do have the stuff installed, but it's not a compatible version with the versions you need for the specific version of SXA that you have to use on a project. Um, I have found Node Version Manager and VM to be a useful tool. Once you install that on your local dev machine, it allows you to switch back and forth between specific versions of Node from the command line whenever you want. So that could be a useful thing. Right. So um, now what I need to do is I need to um, enable Creative Exchange Live and the CLI. So I need to enable the configuration file of Psycho to actually um, use use this feature. And um, I'm just going into the um, experience, uh, experience no, in the file explorer, no experience at all, and go into my Psycho installation and uh, just go into the folder app config include Z overrides or that Z feature overrides. And here I see that uh, I have my configuration file and it's currently disabled. So the only thing I have to do actually is uh, remove the dot disabled, which is the common practice in enabling configurations in Sidecore. So yes, I'm an admin. 
and now I'm back in the uh, in the file explorer. So that is one of the steps we have to do. So this is done. And um, now what we can do is um, we need to install the SXA CLI. So therefore, well, first of all, um, we need to register the URL where to um, where to download the SXA CLI from. So that's um, that's this one here. Uh, I have a little cheat sheet not to do it wrong. Um, so you run the npm uh, config command and set then this uh, URL. As I'm running in a PowerShell terminal, I have to add this little sign here in order to uh, encode the add sign. Uh, if you're running in a Windows command, you, you leave that out. So that's uh, also a common mistake where you might run into issues. And then let's simply uh, run that. So now my uh, URL has been registered with NPM and uh, I'm good to install the SXA CLI. So NPM uh, install and I want to install it globally and then uh, use the SXA CLI here. So uh, what this does is it's pulling the latest version of the CLI, so it will be the version 10. You can also dedicatedly install 9.3, which I said um, doesn't make any sense because the CLI 10 provides much more features and um, it is also compatible with SXA 9.3, so I think there's no good reason to go with an older version. Um, so as I said, this one will always get you the, the latest one if you haven't installed it yet. So let's go for that one and it installs the uh, SXA CLI to my client. Um, to be honest, I have done this step before even multiple times and as you can see, you can rerun the script anytime. Um, so it will always install it again and again and it's uh, it doesn't harm at all. So this takes a little while. And here we go. So installation is done. So let's uh, see, I am in my folder where I want to uh, create my new theme. And therefore I will create now a certain folder structure in order to, to host my theme. Um, that was a bit quick, sorry for that. Um, so what I've done is I've created a directory which starts with a minus and then follows a path called media themes and then the, uh, the the name of my tenant and the name of my site. Why have I done it like this? Because uh, on the one hand, if you use Creative Exchange to to uh, to export your theme, which we are not doing, but this is the structure that you will get for your theme. That's on the one hand the case. And if we are going to uh, install later on uh, or synchronize later on Scriven files, then at least it expect, expects that it has a folder called minus and then uh, uh, under that folder you will find then a Scriven folder. So this is set in the configuration um, and if you do it differently it wouldn't work out of the box. So you could either choose to reconfigure the gulp task or you just do it in that way. So that's why I usually take this uh, this uh, file path or this, this path to create my new theme. So let me navigate into that. Um, so I'm going into here and then media themes SXA tutorial company dev. Here I am and now I'm good to go for installing my uh, new theme. So the command is SXA new and now I have to provide, well I forgot, forgot one thing, sorry for that. I have to register the URL that I want to use and that I want to synchronize with. So it would be the SXA register command and then uh, providing the URL of my site core instance. So that would be, let me go back to my site core instance. And now I have to see my URL again. Here so we're that, basically informing the SXA CLI where to go try to communicate with our local site core instance. Yes. For all future operations that have to talk to site core. 
Yes. So let me register the URL and um, just to confirm, we can also run the SXA get URL command in order to see what URL has been registered, but it shouldn't be a surprise. It's just the URL that we yeah, <laughs> registered a command ago. So um, now we are ready to create a new uh, theme. So let's run the SXA new command and give our theme a name. Um, well, we have created already a theme called SXA tutorial theme. So let's just call it SXA tutorial. Um, or, well, it should be written together. I, otherwise, it will just be called SXA. And the rest is, will be ignored. I do usually try to avoid spaces. Yeah, my, yeah. my theme names if I can. Yeah. So by running this command, we will land now in some kind of questionnaire. Uh, there's nothing to win, but uh, yeah, there's nothing to win but a theme. So um, the first question we will get is uh, if we want to change the registered URL, which we do not want, so we answer that with no. And then we are able to log into Sitecore so that uh, the CLI is able to synchronize our theme item and the folder structure directly with Sitecore. So we can just, well, if our user is still admin, we can uh, just hit enter here. If it's not, then we provide the, the username. Of course, the very secret password. And uh, then we go for the next question. So in here we ask what theme path we expect or where we want to store the theme in. So that will follow the same structure like the, um, the, like the one um, that we've created earlier with, along with our site. So we take the theme name and here the uh, site name, which is then company dev. And um, yeah, hit hit int, enter. Well, there's a misspelling here. Fine. And um, yeah, now it's asking us if we want to set up a configuration file. And yes, we want to do that because in there, um, a lot of stuff is actually um, is uh, stored. So the information in there that is stored is, for example. Um, if we want or what we want to upload of if we want to upload the source files or if we just want to upload the minified files and a bit more. So let's say yes, we want to uh, create a configuration file and um, now it should be downloading already the theme, I think. Let's see. Yeah, and that configuration file when you go and look at it, once it's generated, it has a ton of stuff in there that give you control over what the command line can do for the theme and how the files get synced into Sitecore. Um, for a starting point, this theme generation process gives you access to control a couple little choices here and there, but then later you could go into that configuration file yourself and change a lot more detail if you want to. Yes, or use the SXA config command. So um, here again, we have the question of what modules we want to install along with our theme. And this is just uh, the modules that we also saw earlier in our uh, theme creation process in Sitecore. So I, in this case, again, I'm going to take all of them. So I'm just hitting enter, but you can also make a choice. So, and that's not good. So why is that not a valid name? Maybe since it had spaces in it, it needed uh, quotes around it or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's try it. Uh, SXA. Ah. Sorry. So we are basically restarting the whole process, uh, logging in and provide a custom theme path. So at the end, it doesn't matter where it's going to be stored. So yes, we are, uh, let's use, either we use uh, quotes or uh, just remove the blanks. So let me just remove the blanks. SXA tutorial uh, backslash. Oh, maybe the backslash was the problem. 
that I don't remember if it makes a difference, but yes, it might be wise to match the style of slash used in the format clue. Yeah. So let's say yes, configuration file. Yes, also want to do that, and that seemed to work out better. So now it's actually downloading the theme, and we will also see um, that the theme folder is getting created and the project files are being copied. So, um, yes, so now it's up to our configuration file to set up the Sitecore instance that it's going to uh, synchronize with once we run the CLI commands like uh, SXA build or SXA watch. So again, it's offering us the registered URL, which totally makes sense. So we do not want to change that in this case. And uh, now it's up to uh, transpile the ECMA script to any other version um, and we say, well, what would you usually choose? I'm usually choosing yes, but I would usually leave that as yes. Yeah. And now uh, now comes the question if we want to upload and oh, well, if, if we want to compile the minified files to pre optimized min and yes, we usually want to do that so that our JavaScript files are always uh, compiled once they are saved and now comes the question if we will also want to upload the, the JavaScript source files, which we usually don't want to do. So this way we avoid having all the source files also in our theme and we only keep it locally on our disk and of course synchronize it with this source repository. So let's say uh, no, we don't want to upload those and we get the exact same questions now for the uh, style sheets. So do we want to compile CSS? Yes, we want to do that, but do we want to upload the CSS source files? No, in this case not. And we also don't want to upload the SAS files, which are the sources of our CSS. And now it's done. So let's see what has been happening here. So we can see that um, the structure on our file system has been created with the fonts and SAS files. And you see we have all the um, all the source files here and um, if we take a look into Sitecore, then also here we will find now, uh, if we open up the themes, we will find now a new folder called SXA tutorial without the blank. And here is our new theme uh, that's been created. And it only contains the folder structure plus a readme file. So there's nothing in the styles folder yet. We still, we have to have to synchronize that. Now I have to admit there is now um, a little thing that we have to take care about and that's actually the server config to JSON. So this server config to JSON contains the path to our um, to our theme and then at the end also the theme name. I'm copying that now uh, because there is currently a let's call it a bug. Let's be honest. Um, and uh, that happens and you will see that once we run now, well, we navigate now to our new theme folder that had, has been created for us. Um, so it's SXA tutorial, yes. So we are now in our theme folder and in here I will run now the npm install command or just npm i. So what will happen is that um, of course the npm packages will get installed, but it will also change the server config.json and will put another path for whatever reasons. So therefore it's good to just save whatever has been configured before and just put it back uh, at the right point in time. Or maybe it has been fixed already, let's see. Yeah, as you can see, it has been changed right on the last step. So let's bring back our old, old configuration, not to sync it to the wrong uh, place in Sitecore. And what we can do now is actually run the SXA uh, rebuild command in order to build our assets and then also synchronize it directly to Sitecore. So SXA rebuild, um, it will ask us for our Sitecore credentials which is then again the administrator user and um, the password. 
So it will be admin and then the password. And it tells me that the minification of SARS, CSS and JavaScript files is done. So let's have a look into Sitecore, into our new theme and refresh everything. Zoom yep. in a bit. And now we can, can see, see there's some stuff in there. Exactly. So now we are uh, following the steps to assign that theme now um, to our site and then we are good to go to start um, styling everything. So we've been here before, uh, just selecting our new theme and not to be confused, I will remove the old theme that we have uh, attached to our site. So uh, I will use this one and remove the SXA tutorial theme Oops. and save the item and now go to the page designs node and uh, select our new SXA tutorial theme. Yeah, and now we can start styling our website. I would just publish the site after making that type of change. True. 